These days, I find a YouTube video commenting on my PG issue. Personally, I respect and have no offense to that YouTuber, and I'm okay with that if the view is objective. But I find many facts are ignored or distorted, therefore misleading the audience. So by taking this opportunity, I'm going to clarify some facts, some of which are also essential to this serious speech issue. First, the fundamental part of this speech issue. I cannot agree with the view that PG supervisors are just bosses, and it's their standard or requirement that students have to reach. Based on this logic, students should always compromise or discuss with supervisors, no matter how they are treated or even abused. This actually touches the heart of this speech issue. Namely, who holds the power in deciding your PhD? Obviously, it is a university other than supervisors. The goal of doctoral education is to train independent researchers, namely, who can work or conduct research independently. And PhD supervisors are appointed by the university to help students to achieve that goal. And the university can remove supervisors from their position in some cases, such as neglect of their duties, based on school regulations. Everything should be done based on evidence. So for this serious issue, it's very simple and clear. First, a thorough accountability on this serious academic abuse is required. Otherwise, TODEPs need to provide related regulations to prove that what the promoter did are not misconducts. Second, since my PhD was terminated for failing to reach the graduation standard at TODEPT, then they need to show the graduation standard at TODEPT to justify their decision. By taking a look at the standard at another reputable Dutch university, an acceptable PhD thesis quality is one or two chapters published or likely to be published in low-ranking journals in the field, indicating that the minimum graduation requirement is one or two journal papers published in low-ranking journals. Given that a PhD supervised by the same promoter graduated with only one low-ranking journal paper, the standard should be roughly the same with one at tilled out. And with four top-tier journal papers published, I'm way beyond that standard. If the university cannot do that, then that is a clear mismanagement, which would also be a very serious risk to many other students in the future. Second, communication. Communication is important, but there's no need to overly stress that. And it should be clear that communicating with supervisors and facing serious academic abuse are two different things. The co-promoter said it clear that I have to do what the promoter requested. And if Sophia says you have to devote a separate chapter on it, then you have to do that. If Sophia says that you have to change the structure and the argument, then you have to change the structure and the argument. It's just it's as simple as that. Where? And you can have your own opinion about this, but if you want us to be your promoter and co-promoter, you really have to change it. It's just as simple as that. It means there's no negotiation space then how can students set up milestones with supervisors in this case? I also reported that I was repeatedly bullied and intimidated when I didn't satisfy their requests. I assume it's essentially about the benefits from my research. When talking about communications, I don't understand why many facts were ignored in that video. For example, the promoter set her graduation requirement, which is three journal papers published. Then after I reached, she broke what she said. She promised and also informed the faculty to prove my thesis in two or three weeks, but later broke what she said. Why there was no action taken from the faculty after things went wrong again, as they persuaded me to continue the PhD with supervisors when I requested to change supervisors. Are there lack of communication skills? Third, producing and publishing the third paper. As clarified with evidence shown in my first video, I submit a paper with my own name with the approval from the promoter. I don't understand why this fact was ignored, but the YouTuber repeatedly mentioned publishing paper without coercing supervisors. If I coerce supervisors without approval, then that would be a serious problem. Besides, the paper is done by myself simply because I'm capable of working out it myself, but it doesn't mean there was no communication with supervisors for a year. Actually, the promoter knew exactly my progress in every step. The fourth paper was also completed by myself, and it was submitted and finally published after supervisors decided to terminate my PhD. So there's no any violation of publication regulations. Further, it makes no sense to comment on both sides. 
I worked out the third paper by myself without the guidance from supervisors, and I published the paper without co-authoring them. Fourth, literature review chapter of the PhD thesis. As clarified with evidence shown in my first video, the two PhD dissertations approved by the same promoter do not have a separate literature review chapter. Actually, most PhD dissertations in the faculty are paper-based. So in this case, literature review is done in papers. Writing an additional full chapter for that is not required. But the promoter still forced me to write an additional full chapter of literature review. The workload of a core chapter of a PhD thesis is equivalent to writing a journal paper, which normally takes a year. Essentially, I assume the promoter wanted another paper from me. That is a clear double standard and the potential exploration. I don't understand why the YouTuber assumed that it is the promoter's style to have a separate chapter of a literature review, and why the fact that supervisors forced me to depict their request as my own plan in the e-review form was ignored. Their behavior is absolutely illegal. Last, just to take an example. In 1905, Einstein submitted his 24-page PG thesis to the University of Zurich. His thesis, despite of being short, is one of his five influential papers published from 1905 to 1906. The thesis finally learned him a PhD. I was nothing compared to Einstein, but just hope this example can help people rethink what the doctoral education is about, the science, the content of the research, or a business, or even a power game. With four top-tier journal papers published, the serious academic abuse reported. The result is not getting a PhD, but a termination for failing to reach the graduation standard at Tilde. However, the university hasn't shown their standard to justify their decision, nor taken any investigation on this PhD issue. Then assume it's not a failure to learn a PhD. It's a failure and a shame of the education system.